You ever watch a movie and just feel absolutely nothing by the end? The movie wasn't bad enough to be funny, and it also wasn't bad enough to actually be mad about it. It wasn't good either. It wasn't even fun. It was just nothing. That's how I felt after watching Uglies, which you might mistake for a 2015 movie, but nope, it's from this year somehow. Although production on it did begin way back in 2006. Now, the best way I can describe it is uh, we have Hunger Games at home. It's like if you took all the good and interesting parts of Hunger Games and slapped all of it out of there. Now, the movie also stars a bunch of people that you've probably never heard of, except for maybe Joey King, who you might know from such amazing masterpieces as The Kissing Booth and The Slender Man. <laughs> Now, I don't think she's a necessarily a bad actress. I think she's actually kind of decent in this movie, but... Oh man, does she need a better agent? Because holy shit, I don't think I've ever seen her in a single good movie ever. Though, a neat little fun fact. She is the one that pitched the movie to Netflix. Because apparently she's a big fan of the book. Which is pretty cool, I guess. I haven't read the book. I don't know if it's good. Maybe it sucks. I don't know. But what I do know is that the movie definitely does suck. I'm not exaggerating when I say it's probably one of the most boring and generic movies I've ever watched. Which is saying something, because I've watched some very boring and generic movies. So, let's just get into this so I can explain why this movie is so mid. Okay, so the movie opens up with a big exposition dump, which looks like a shitty music video. Basically, the movie's set in the Humanity kept using fossil fuels and doing war and shit, which almost destroyed the planet, you know, the huge. But a bunch of scientists cooked up some flowers in the lab, which somehow solved the energy crisis. But, you know, people suck, so they kept doing war, so then the scientists decided that they could solve war by just making everyone hot. So they did, and those people are called pretties. I know, how original. But you only get hotified when you turn 16, so before that, you're an ugly. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. Basically, it's just Hunger Games, but instead of everyone being poor, everyone's a 7 out of 10. At first, I thought it was supposed to be, like, metaphorical, because none of the uglies in the movie are actually ugly. Uh, like, all of these actors look, at the very least, decently attractive. I guess, by Hollywood standards, maybe they're not the hottest, but that's only because Hollywood is insane. But then everyone kept acting like the main girl looks like female Steve Buscemi. Ah! Good God! It's hideous. So I guess they are supposed to actually be ugly. There's also a revolutionary group trying to bring down the government because of course there is. Now, before I even really get into the actual plot, I gotta complain about how this world shouldn't work at all. Normally I wouldn't really care, I don't really like nitpicking world building, like as long as it's not overly stupid, I'll go along with basically anything. Uh, so the fact that I'm complaining about how this world shouldn't work means that it's really dumb. So the biggest problem is that the city shouldn't function at all. The uglies are stuck in these big colleges all day and the pretties just party 24-7, so who's working in the factories? Who's doing road work? Who's sweeping the streets and all that shit? Sure, there's the scouts that basically act like the cops, but it'd be kind of dumb to have your military sweep the streets. So how does any of this shit work? The movie doesn't explain any of it. Honestly, even after watching the movie twice, I still have no idea how this society is supposed to function. I still have no idea how the uglies live, other than that they spent basically all their time in the colleges learning about how good being pretty is. I barely know how the pretties live. I don't know anything about how the government works. It just doesn't develop any of this stuff. Maybe the book explains it, but I haven't read it, and I shouldn't have to read the book for the movie to make sense. But the main reason that I even care about this stuff at all is because the movie's so boring that there wasn't really much else to think about. And you know what the crazy thing is? We're not even two minutes into the movie and I've already complained this much. So this is Tally Youngblood. No, I'm not kidding. That's her actual name. It sounds like some shit you'd find on Twitter. She's also the cardboard cutout serving as our main character. Basically, just imagine Katniss, if she has any even remotely interesting traits completely sucked out of her, which is saying something because one of Katniss's defining traits is how f***ing bland and average and apathetic she is. But Tally is somehow worse, and I'm pretty sure it's not intentional. She's an ugly who's gonna have the big operation in a month. 
she's also friends with Paris, who's gonna have the surgery before her. And same as with Tally, uh, I couldn't tell you what his character is if you held a taser to my nuts. They are also totally not in love, you guys. For real though, the romance that's like vaguely built up between them also literally doesn't end up mattering at all. Not that it's well built up to begin with. So before Paris gets the surgery, he promises to meet Tally in a month under the bridge that connects the pretty part of town to the ugly part. After that, we get some really awkward and clunky flashbacks of Tally and Paris bonding, which I'm pretty sure are only there because the writers realized that we wouldn't give a singular f*** about Paris and Tally's relationship otherwise, so they just quickly slapped in some flashbacks and called it a day. So a month later, Tally's waiting under the bridge, but Paris ghosts her, so she decides to sneak across the bridge to find it. We get to see how nice the pretties have it, and it's at this point that you'll probably notice how dog shit the movie looks. First, you'll probably notice how f***ing weird the pretties look. Whatever filters they threw over everyone do not work. They look uncanny, like Voldemort if he hadn't had a botched nose job. It looks like they'd eat my skin. It looks like they'd pull a nosk on me. They look like shit, is what I'm saying. And maybe the uncanniness is intentional, but I refuse to give this movie that level of credit. Also, even if it was intentional, I don't think it worked out that well. The CGI is even worse. It looks like if the CW made a movie. Everything looks super floaty, nothing looks real. It's super obvious when they switch out the actors to CGI. I'm not gonna point all of it out. You've got eyes, use them. And the music is also absolute ass. Half of it is the most generic score you've ever heard. The other half is shitty pop songs that you've definitely heard before. Whatever you're thinking of right now, that's exactly what it sounds like. So basically, the entire movie is shit. It sounds like shit, it looks like shit, and spoilers, but the plot's also shit. So after some party shenanigans, or chicanery, chicanery. Tally finds Paris, but he's acting all weird now that he's hot. But before he can explain anything, Tally's found out. She runs away, grabs this dumb bungee vest, don't ask me how it works, and escapes the hot cops. She makes it back to the bridge, is almost found by a hover ship thing, but it doesn't notice her until she accidentally kicks a stone into the water, which somehow, f***ing SOMEHOW, alerts the ship. I genuinely have no clue how it heard a tiny little rock dropping into the water, but it didn't notice the whole ass entire girl standing on the bridge but but sure whatever whatever this other random girl shay shows up on a floaty skateboard and saves tally they pull some tony hawk shit but you know floaty and manage to escape the cops don't ask me why they don't follow up on the fact that somebody broke into the pretty district like you'd think that they like send in some investigators to see who broke into the pretty district but like they don't they just don't care i guess Anyways, we get a montage of Shay and Tally bonding, and Shay teaches her how to ride a hoverboard. Also, Tally has like this dumb trick with like the GPS rings that all the uglies wear where she can like fool the dispensers into dispensing the wrong shit. It's never explained how it works. I'm only bringing it up because it's gonna come up later. Then Shay takes Tally to the old city and they leave behind their rings, which they can just do, I guess, which makes them pretty shitty tracking devices. They f*** around a little before Shay reveals that she's not gonna get the surgery and instead she's going with David to the smoke. Tally doesn't agree and they argue a little, but Tally doesn't stop her and Shay gives her a map so she can find her if she changes her mind. We're a third of the way through the movie, by the way. It takes the movie half an hour to get through all this. So Tally is finally about to get the Kardashian treatment, but evil McBad guy shows up with his super evil bad guy voice. Tally Youngblood. To take her to HQ because they've learned that Shay's with the smoke. Don't ask me how they know that even though they don't seem to know that Tally's the one that broke into the pretty district, but sure. Tally meets Professor Cable, the person apparently in charge of the city, and she's obviously the bad guy. Imagine President Snow, but without the intimidation or any interesting character traits or even being remotely memorable or really anything at all. At least they don't try to make it into a twist that she's evil. So she tells Tally that the smoke are dangerous and also that they're making a weapon. That's a nice argument, Senator. Why don't you back it up with a sword? My source is that I made it the f*** up. She wants Tally to infiltrate the smoke to bring Shay back. 
and also so they can actually find where the smoke is because they don't know so they can make all of them hot. Tally doesn't want to help them because Cable is super duper shady and even though Tally's brainwashed and also brain dead, she can still vaguely sense the massive consort Radon hitbox sized aura of evil coming off Cable. But later that night, Parrish shows up to convince her to save Shay, so she agrees. But obviously it was all a part of Cable's plan because of course it is. Paris then starts talking about how seeing Tally kind of made him miss being not hot. And I'm just gonna reveal the big twist in the movie. Uh, the surgery actually gives people brain damage to make them easy to control. Shocking, I know. Yeah, so the movie acts like this is somehow a twist, but not only do they make it extremely obvious what's actually going on, but also... What else was it gonna be? So, Cable tricks Paris into having another evil surgery to make him stronger and give him even more brain damage. Hey, the main character's best friend slash love interest gets brainwashed by the government and ends up being used by said government to try and kill the main girl? Doesn't that sound kind of familiar? Meanwhile, Tally follows Shay's map, which has some pretty strange instructions, uh, something about liking and subscribing, I think? I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention. Anyways, she finds David, he takes her to one of his outposts and not directly to the smoke, cause we need to vet them first. He proceeds to do nothing to actually vet her. Then she's reunited with Shay, and it's cute and stuff, uh, or it would be if I actually, you know, gave a f <clears throat> about either of them. Next morning, David takes Tally to burn some lily fields, cause the flowers are toxic and actually killing the planet. Shocking, I know. So they do that, but while they're cosplaying Willow Mains, they're attacked by some scouts, and also Shay gets knocked out in the helicopter. Tally saves her, which proves to David that she's a good guy, so he takes her to the smoke. We then get a montage of Tally getting used to life there, which I'm gonna skip over because it's boring as shit and nothing happens. We are over halfway through the movie, by the way. Also, David wants to f*** Tally now. I have no idea why. Because she's got the personality of a f***ing maggot. No, you know what? That's insulting to the maggot. At least I feel something towards a maggot. It's mostly disgust, but at least it's something. I have no idea why David is suddenly in love with Tally. Because there's barely any development between them. Like, the only assumption I can make is that David's just so horribly horny and nobody else wants him. So he's just like, uh, new hole. Anyways, David takes Tally to his parents who reveal that they're working on a cure and also that they discovered that the surgery causes brain lesions. But when they tried to tell Cable about it, she told them to stop digging. Damn bro, really? I could never have guessed any of this. This is the most twisty twist that's ever twisted. They escaped and found that the smoke, but they can't actually make the cure out here because the last ingredient that they need can only be found in the pretty HQ. Don't ask me how they even got this close to making a cure when they live out in the woods. After that, Tally tries to tell David that she's working for Cable, but David's like, Come over here and kiss me on my hot mouth. I'm feeling romantical. Tally then throws the tracker necklace into the fire to destroy it. Actually, I didn't mention that, did I? Yeah, a cable gave her, like, a necklace with a tracker in it. it. Somehow, despite, you know, being destroyed in the fire, that somehow activates the necklace for some reason, which is already dumb. But, um, the stupider thing is that how the f did Cable not find them already? This is a futuristic society with like technology that is way ahead of what we have today and you're telling me that they couldn't find some hobos living in the woods? We're not shown that they have like any cloaking device or something to keep the smoke hidden so I'm just assuming that the pretties to haven't tried to actually find the smoke at all up until now. But now they finally got their IP address, so they invade the server to grief everything. Cable and David's mom argue a little, and the conversation basically goes like this. Controlling people is good. Uh, actually, controlling people is bad. Thank you. Then Paris kills David's dad. David runs out of his hiding spot, which isn't even a good hiding spot to begin with, and then he gets captured. Tally runs after him, and then Cable reveals to everyone that Tally's a traitor, and that she's finally gonna become a Kardashian. In fact, everyone's gonna become a Kardashian. Tally then runs away, and these, may I remind you, superhuman soldiers cannot catch up to her. She runs into one of the huts while a scout tries to break down the door even though there's a giant hole in the wall. Tally spills some gasoline on the floor and sets it on fire. She then jumps out of the 
I will repeat, giant hole in the wall before the hut explodes, which somehow allows David to break free. And again, the superhuman scouts also can't catch up to him. I mean, earlier these guys were moving like Fortnite pros fueled by nothing but G Fuel and meth, and now they're moving like they're trying to hold a shit in. Now, Cable could easily send out a bunch of scouts to find them, but then the movie would be over, so instead she decides that it's a great idea to let them go so Tally can come to her, and then she just f***s off. So David at least has enough brain cells left over to hate Tally now, but Tally tells him that he needs her to rescue everyone. So they go off to the city and infiltrate HQ, and I could complain about how these two absolutely should not be able to infiltrate this high-tech futuristic military base with literally nothing other than a slight distraction. But do you really care at this point? I highly doubt that this is the thing that breaks the movie for you. Hey, so uh, your whole plan was to let her come to you, but then you don't actually set a trap? Really? Yes, yes, it turns out that there is sort of a trap, but it is a trap that relies on Tally being really stupid. So they find everyone and Tally uses the stupid ring trick to break in, which is really dumb because you're telling me that this high-tech futuristic facility has such a massive basic ass security flaw that any rando could take advantage of. But they break everyone out except Shay because she's already been taken to get yassified. So Tally gets David and his mom to help her save Shay, and they just kind of walk into the big surgery room. Tally! Oh no, he's hot! Now, I kind of like this twist, but at this point in the movie I was so checked out that I couldn't give a f- <clears throat> Even if you made me rewatch all of season 8 of Game of Thrones for like 6 weeks straight. So, Shay's done a full 180, cause brain damage, and then Cable walks in because of course this is a trap, what else was it gonna be? So Cable tells them to get in the robot, I mean get in the surgery tubes. Then she talks about how free thinking is bad and yada yada yada, but she monologues too long so she gets f***ing incinerated. Because this was actually their plan all along. Uh, problem is that the plan's really f***ing stupid. So they assumed that Shay was going to be held in the big surgery room because this plan only works in a room with a big ass window. Which, uh, by, by the way, the f***ing fire somehow breaks through the glass, which I don't think is how that would work. I, I guess uh, any flamethrower experts correct me if I'm wrong. And then this this random guy th th that I haven't addressed at all up until this point, but this random guy is supposed to get David's helicopter all the way over here in time, and they either assumed that Cable was gonna force them into the surgery pods, or they just kinda hoped that they wouldn't get the Harvey Dent treatment as well. But man, it sure is nice that everything worked out, cause otherwise they'd be dead. It's also nice that the surgery pods are super f***ing slow and they weren't left maimed or, you know, yossified. So they get the hell out of there, but while they're escaping, they encounter Paris. Tally tries to do the whole, I know you're still in there, this isn't you thing, but David has a PTSD freak out and attacks Paris. We get a shitty fight scene and Paris falls down a cliff and dies. Of course, before he uh, falls down the cliff, he's got to have that little moment where he recognizes Tally. Now this whole scene is dumb. First off, Tally's a f***ing idiot. That's it. She's just dumb. Second, David is also dumb. If he just hadn't freaked out, then Paris wouldn't, you know, have tried to murder them. Thirdly, I don't give a f*** about Paris' death because I don't give a f*** about his relationship with Tally or him because the movie did a shit job of establishing Paris and Tally's relationship and him recognizing her right before he falls down a f***ing cliff doesn't change that. So, they escaped the facility, David's mom managed to grab the other half of the cure from the lab, and she slipped the prototype into David's bag earlier. Don't ask me how this tiny glass vial didn't shatter during any of this, especially because David had no idea that he even had it. Tally immediately wants to use it on Shay, but let me quickly remind you that she has massive brain damage and now has the mental capacity of the average person on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter, by the way. So she doesn't want to get cured. 
Hallie just wants to cure her anyways because she's got massive brain damage and clearly can't make a decision like that for herself. But everyone else, for some reason, agrees that they can't use it on Shay, even though she's got massive brain damage and clearly isn't in a fit state to choose for herself. So instead, Tally decides that she'll go back and get the surgery and then she'll meet back up with them and take the cure so they can test it, which is probably the dumbest plan I've ever heard. So you want to intentionally get the surgery, which may I remind you, causes both massive brain damage and also makes you no longer want to change back. And then you somehow want to sneak out of the city and meet back up with them, despite the fact that there will probably be a shit ton of security placed on you to catch David and the gang in case they try to rescue you. And then you just kind of hope that one test will be enough to determine whether the cure's got any bad side effects, even though realistically, you need hundreds, if not thousands of tests to figure out if the cure's actually safe. This whole thing, right, this whole plan is only, only exists because they do have to test the cure to make sure it's safe. But one test isn't gonna be enough to actually see if it's safe and if it even works. And this entire plan hinges on the assumption that Tally will somehow not get brain damage or that she'll somehow be able to overcome literal brain damage through sheer f***ing willpower. But despite how rock stupid. this whole plan is, for some reason everyone agrees. So Tally gets arrested and Cable is somehow still alive despite getting absolutely roasted. She shouldn't just be crispy, she should be charcoal. But all she's got is a tiny little spot that you can barely even call a burn scar. This is what you're supposed to look like after you get roasted. And this, and this, not this. Anyways, the movie ends with us seeing the newly and hottened Tally, but she still got the scar that she and Paris shared that I haven't mentioned a single time up until now because who cares? <laughs> and that's it. That's where it ends. I guess I respect their confidence, but they're not getting a sequel. Then again, worse things have somehow gotten a sequel. Okay, so why is the movie so mid? I mean, yeah, it probably doesn't sound that good, but it probably doesn't sound um, as bad as it actually is, right? Yeah, well, that's because the biggest problem with the movie is that it's just so f***ing boring, which I can't really convey that well. Mostly because I skipped over the boring shit because, well, it's boring, and there's nothing to actually say about those parts of the movie. It's just nothing interesting happens in the entire movie. The characters are all bland and I didn't give a f about any of them. I don't care about Tally and Paris' relationship because it's barely developed. Shay and Tally's bond is a little better, but that's only because they have more scenes together. There's absolutely no bond between Tally and David. There's honestly not much to even say about any of the characters. Cable is mildly more interesting, but they, again, barely develop her. Like, there's some halfway interesting ideas, but they do nothing with them. But yeah, like, I've given you the play-by-play, -play, basically, but I've also skipped a lot of scenes, because there's just nothing going on in them. It's honestly just not that much to actually say about the movie. Like, I honestly expected to say more about it, but the biggest thing is just that it's boring and that it's extremely generic. I wasn't lying when I said that this is Hunger Games at home. I don't know how to end this video. I I'm just, I I'm just gonna go if you don't mind. Bye. Fuck this man, what am I doing? That was a bad movie. Have <laughs> the balls. <laughs> Think that they'll actually get a sequel. You're not getting a sequel, buddy. You're not getting a sequel. You are not no, not even close.